Hello there, uh, this is Dr. Vahid Aryadust. Uh, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do run a uh, Cohen Kappa's analysis. And I'm also going uh, to explain what Cohen's Kappa is uh, and how it's different from uh, the conventional agreement analysis. Uh, Cohen's Kappa is used as a reliability statistic and it's a measure of rate or agreement. Uh, but the difference between this measure of rate of agreement and the conventional one, which I have presented in the first video of this series on reliability, is that Cohen Kappa, uh, Cohen's Kappa corrects for a rate of agreement due to chance. So anything which is due to chance is taken out from uh, the analysis uh, or out of the equation uh, using Cohen's Kappa analysis. It ranges between minus one and plus one. But uh, the problem will be anything close to zero or definitely negative signs or directions will, will indicate that there is a big problem or disagreement between the raters. Uh, Cohen's kappa can be uh, perceived of as a cross-tabulation method or a kind of coefficient, a correlation coefficient. According to McHugh in 2012, uh, if you square the kappa's value, um, uh, that square uh, translates conceptually to the amount of accuracy, that's the reverse of error, uh, in the data due to congruence uh, among the data collectors or, or the, among the coders. This square of kappa's uh, coefficient is one of the advantages of kappa and in this analysis over the conventional agreement, although I, as I will explain later, uh, the conventional rate or agreement analysis uh, can still be useful under certain circumstances. So now let's look at two scenarios here. I'm going to uh, I'm going to explain two scenarios. Scenario one is let's assume that we have two raters, this rater and this rater, just representations of differences in their rating style, who are expected to rate this stack of papers, for example, um, essays written by a, a group of students. And then you're interested to figure out if the scores that they assign to these papers are different or not. Um, so th there are 13 paper papers altogether, and Rater 1 has scored them in this way, and Rater 2 uh, in slightly different ways, or maybe in significantly different ways. We will find out if if there are significant similarities or differences between the two raters. Now we can calculate the differences between these two raters scores. For example, for uh, the first paper it's going to be zero, for the second one it's going to be zero. So I'm going to just really type in a formula uh, to make everything easier. Equals this cell minus this cell and enter. Then you'll get it. Then uh, drag it down uh, and you'll get the same kind of estimates for uh, the differences between rater 1 and rater 2. For example, uh, the differences are 0 between raters 1 and 2 uh, when it comes to paper 2, but in paper 3 there is a big difference. That's The difference is 2 scores. And for a scale, that ranges from 1 to 5 or 0 to 5. As you see, the highest score is a 5. Actually, the lowest score is a 1. So 1 to 5, a difference of 2 is really big. Now, what we can do is, as I explained in the first video, is to estimate the agreement uh, rate or the rate of agreement between the two raters just in a conventional way. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And then I'm going to arrange them from the lowest, really just to make sure that I, I'll count everything. So here I have, how many zeros do I have? Okay, I have got six zeros. As it says, count, count of zeros is six. Therefore, I have six agreements over 13. Let me just calculate it. I have six over... 13, that's the number of papers, 13 agreements, that's, this is our agreement rate, is 0 0.46, uh, let me just copy and perhaps paste it here, okay, so this is the agreement rate as estimated 
through the conventional method. Now I'm going to use Cohen's kappa to see if this agreement rate or uh, rate or agreement re uh, reliability will change or not. So I've already transferred these to an Excel sheet to a, an SPSS file. This is Raider 1 and Raider 2. L let's look at the data view. This is exactly the Raider 1 and Raider 2. So I'm going to go to Analyze, uh, Descriptive Statistics, uh, Cross Tabs. And then you'll get Cohen's Kappa here. You can move uh, Raider 1 to raw, RAWs and and uh, Raider 2 to Columns. Well, really doesn't matter. You can flip it around as well. Uh, you can go to Statistic uh, and click at least Cohen Kappa. Okay. So then, okay. Then there is another useful statistic uh, in cells under cells. Uh, that's expected. You're going to see the observed counts and expected counts, and then I will tell you what that means exactly. So continue, and we'll just leave the rest as is, and click OK to get the results. Now here are the results. There are 13 uh, pairs of comparisons between pair uh, rate of 1 and 2, all of which is valid. Now what is uh, important here is uh, well, the difference is between count and expected. So if if the expected is 0 0.2, anything that is above 0 0.2 is basically above chance. And if anything is equal to or below 0 0.2 is probably by chance. For example, here is, is a chance, uh, you see, because 0 is smaller than 0 0.2. So you can go through this uh, table and find out what is chance and what is not chance. So this is this is above chance because the expected count is 1.2 but what we have observed is 3 so Raider 2 uh, and Raider 3 has chosen count 3 3 times together and they, they agree on that um, okay now this table is basically the result of your co Cohen's uh, Kappa's uh, analysis the value of Cohen's, uh, Cohen's Kappa is you can see it here, 0 0.321 and almost 0 0.2 something. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right beside the other uh, here maybe. Yeah, just to show you that there is there is actually a, a, respectable, a respectable difference between the two uh, estimates of uh, uh, inter-rater uh, reliability here because uh, this is way larger than uh, Cohen's Kappa. So because the, one of the reasons is that Cohen's Kappa has uh, corrected for the, the chance. Uh, that's the uh, agreement due to chance. And uh, Cohen's Kappa, however, provides us with a p-value here, approximate, kind of something like a p-value, approximate significance, which is 0 0.017, which means that at a value of something like uh, P uh, smaller than 0 0.05, uh, there is a significant similarity between the two raters. However, this significant similarity is is not very sizable, as you see, is not is not that high. So that's one example where uh, we can we can easily see that there is some uh, remarkable difference between what Cohen's Kappa estimates and what a traditional uh, uh, rater agreement analysis provides. And the second one uh, is uh, a kind of analysis of test items. Let's say that you have a, a reading test item and a reading test um, paper and you, you want to figure out what each test item measures. Now of course you have different methods of doing it. For doing it you can ask, uh, you can interview uh, students or you can ask experts to sit down and uh, uh, look at the, the test items and figure out uh, what makes uh, each item different from another and in their opinion what each test item is measuring. Well each of these two methods have uh, their own limitations, which I'm not going to discuss in for this video because it falls outside of the scope of reliability analysis. But I here I assume um, a very um, simple kind of model will be very useful. So in this model, I assume that there are three uh, subconstructs uh, that 
uh, the test is measuring. One is the ability to inference uh, to, to make inferences and therefore there are some items that measure inference making uh, the ability to understand explicitly stated information and therefore there are some items that measure understanding explicit information or explicit message and the ability to do both at the same time uh, or almost at the same time and that's items uh, that's represented by items that are measuring both of them three and these uh, codes are really nominal the, they don't they don't mean uh, they don't suggest any size so uh, let's look at some of the these items just randomly for item one both uh, raters <coughs> or coders in this case we don't have a raider here we I think the best terminology here will be a coder the, the coder coder one and coder two agree because both of them give item one one that means both of them agree that item one is measuring the ability to make inferences and you can go all the way down and see if uh, there are differences and similarities between them an easier way would be just pretty much like the previous scenario to subtract these uh, these ratings or these codings from each other even though we know that uh, uh, these are nominal but what I'm uh, looking for here is the number of zeros which would uh, give me a clear idea of agreement so if this uh, is equal to uh, 1 minus 1 and enter so then I drag it down and I'll get the number of zeros I copy this and paste it here let's just paste it in this in this area okay and then I go to data sort and click from the smallest to largest I can uh, I can um, actually sort them from the smallest to the largest and there we are so I just need to know the number of zeros which is 13 so I've got 13 zeros over 20 because I've got 20 items so zeros let's let's remember that zeros represent agreement that means there is no difference between uh, there is zero difference between coder 1 and coder 2 so I'm gonna divide uh, 13 over 20 which you've got 0 0.65 which is relatively high actually so what the traditional agreement returns is 0 0.65 uh, did I say 0 0.65? Yes, 0 0.65. Uh, but let's look at what SPSS provides us with. This is coder 1 and coder 2. This is the same data set. I've already uh, inputted it into uh, SPSS. I go to Analyze, statistic, uh, Descriptive Statistics, and Cross Tabs. So it's t uh, coder 1 and coder 2. Let me just reset everything for you. Coder 1 goes to uh, rows 2. Uh, rows uh, and coder 2 row goes to columns like I said doesn't matter which one you will choose so you can choose cones kappa here and then in the cells you need to choose expected it just gives us a feel for uh, the differences between observed ratings and expected ratings then I'm gonna click OK and here are the results so here again we have uh, uh, in this in this cell we've got the expected count of 2.1 whereas the observed was 5 therefore this is above chance so this is some some kind of significant similarity whereas here uh, it's uh, the similarity which is observed is 1 so th th therefore uh, the uh, similarity is perhaps due to chance this is how Cohen's kappa actually makes sense of the data and and it could uh, introduce a sort of limitation in, in the analysis which I will touch on quickly uh, after uh, I explain the uh, symmetric measures here uh, Cohen's kappa is interestingly pretty close to no 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 it's not it's not even close actually it's much smaller than what we got in the previous analysis let me copy and uh, yeah you see and paste it here so we have 0 0.476 whereas the traditional uh, agreement analysis returns 0.65 so there is a big difference and the difference is because Cohen's kappa is like I said and I think I have been repeating this a few times I hope it doesn't sound annoying but like I said it's it's because that Cohen's kappa is uh, correcting for uh, uh, 
agreements due to chance. And so there is a significant dif uh, the similarities are a significant similarity between uh, the ratings provided by the two raters, and that's at the p-value uh, level of 0 0.002. Um, now there are some um, final points about Cohen's kappa that I, I would like to elaborate on, and they're coming actually from McHugh 2012. Uh, this is a very interesting paper. I recommend that you read it. Although it's not about applied linguistics, I think it is still applicable. So McHugh mentions uh, Cohen's um, way um, or ranges for <coughs> interpreting Cohen's kappa, and that's uh, provided in this table. Uh, from 0 to 20, there is little agreement or just no agreement because uh, the percentage of data that are replicable is between 0 to 4 percent um, and that's Cohen Kappa's square value actually so then between 0 0.21 to uh, 0.39 is minimal uh, between 0 0.40 to 0 0.59 is weak and uh, between 0 0.6 to 0 0.79 is moderate and between 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 is strong and above 0 0.9 is almost perfect with anything between uh, 82 if you square this you get uh, 0 0.82 so that's 82 percent to 100 percent of data that are replicable uh, that are reliable uh, so th there is a limitation however to uh, the Cohen's kappa and that's uh, it underestimates agreement because in most cases there's in all cases there's always a penalty for what Cohen's kappa assumes to be uh, due to uh, due to some chance. Therefore, what McHugh recommends is really a very interesting and and I think applicable kind of uh, advice here. Perhaps the best advice for researchers is to calculate both um, percent agreement and kappa like what we what I did in the first video and what I did in, in this video uh, if there's um, likely to be much guessing among the raters uh, it may make sense to use a kappa statistic uh, but if raters are well trained and little guessing is likely to exist the researcher may safely rely on on person agreement to determine inter rater reliability so it's always a good idea to uh, estimate both and then uh, it's also important to uh, make sure that you you know your raters very well and you know whether uh, they would rely on guessing in coding and rating or they would stick to the rubrics and for example they are very well experienced and they will not uh, do it go through any guessings um, so I hope you will find this video useful thank you very much for your attention if you find it really useful uh, please give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. Have a good day.